Amen. I ask you to bless our praise team on this morning. Yes, and God bless our pastor. Touch him, God. Give him strength in his body. Yes, yes. Touch him by the crown of his head to the soul of his feet. In the name of Jesus. And Father, right now, I give your name all the praise, yes. all the honor, all the glory. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray.
experiences leads us into spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with God and one another. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the prayers of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do not pray to the Lord.
Amen. Rochester, New York. Amen. We're going to have prayer by Minister Davis. Amen. But the Lord says something different. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Lord, touch our administrators, Lord. Touch our counselors, 
Our scripture today will come from 1 Corinthians 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians 11th chapter. And we're going to start at the 23rd verse. Again, that's 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and we'll start at the 21st, 23rd verse. Can you have it? Say amen. 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 Glory to God. If you would, those of you in the building, if you please stand on the word of the Lord. I'm going to start at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup, is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show, show the Lord's death till he come. Whoso, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let but let a, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We've read the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, chapter, verses 23 through 27. 29. Amen. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his red word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
We can have it, say amen. Yeah. Matthew chapter 27, verse 34, you will find these words. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Can we say amen? amen. Jesus
they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. I want to talk to us by the grace of God. Uh, trust not to worry too long, but I want to talk to us from the subject he would not drink. He would not drink. Can we say amen? Uh, the question that I put before you today is, have you ever reached a point when you said to yourself, enough is enough? Yes. Yes. When you reach that point, you have decided that you cannot or will not take it anymore. Yes. Before modern forms of transport, people use animals to transport their goods. There is a story that tells of a rich man that used camels to carry his straw. He loaded them with as much straw as possible to get the most out of the animals. One day he proceeded to load one piece of straw onto the camel's back and the camel collapsed. His back had broken and the man was unable to move any straw. It was that last straw that broke the camel's back. The last straw wasn't the problem in itself, but it was the accumulated weight of all the other straw. How many burdens can your back carry before you reach the last straw. Your rent or house note is due. Your car needs repair. They cut your hours at work. The toilet is backed up. That's the point where you said if anything else goes wrong, it will be the last Strong. I can't or won't take any more. The abused wife endures the last straw when she says, that was the last time you were hit me. The drunk driver who now escapes a severe accident though knows that one more drinking episode will be the last straw. The man who cheats on his wife knows that one more unfaithful episode could be the last straw. One more refusal to see the doctor, one more drink, one more dance with the devil could be the last straw. When we have lived lives filled with sin and reach a point when we say enough is enough. That is where Jesus steps in and offers us a way to atone and repent. Do I have a witness here? He knows what it's like for us to suffer pain and bitterness. And, and, and my brothers and sisters, at the cross, he provides a means for us to reconcile with God. Do I have a witness here? As believers, let us remember that when he returns, he will turn our lives of pain and bitterness into joy and peace. On the cross, our Savior refused the bitter cup. He did so to give hope to millions who have reached the last straw. As I press on, this text focuses on Jesus' refusal of the bitter drink he was given to drink as he died on the cross. On the cross, Jesus sacrificed himself 
for the sins of all who would believe on him. He also absorbed the sting of eternal death and the bitter experience of life at the same time. My brothers and sisters, the Roman crucifixion was designed to humiliate its victim with a slow death. It was customary, however, for those that were to be put to death to be given a cup of spiced wine. The cup Christ was given had a special vengeful touch. I wish somebody was walking with me. It was filled with wine mingled with vinyl and gall to make it sour and bitter. Do I have a witness here? Christ tasted the cup and then refused uh, it, even though it was, praise the Lord, uh, uh, what would be considered as open and would have dulled his senses to pain. Praise his holy name. He would not drink anymore. Praise his holy name. By uh, doing so, he would feel the pain of the nails in his hands and his feet. He would feel the pain of the thorny crown on his head. He felt his own pain on the cross, uh, but he also absorbed the pain and bitterness of all who would believe in him in centuries to come. Oh, I wish I had somebody that's walking with me here. He would not drink the mixture because he needed to feel what we feel. Amen. Say that. He would not, he would not drink, drink because he needed, because he needed to, feel to feel what we feel. What we feel. Yeah, praise the Lord. We ought to be thankful Amen. that the Lord wanted to feel what we feel. Amen. Do I have a witness here? Sitting and later a song like a rope, Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save and he can heal. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Do I have a witness here? Those who trust in Christ as their Lord and Savior feel a sweet soul for the bitterness that life brings because he brings a sweetness to bitter life experiences. He understands our dilemma. I wish I had somebody here. He understands our feelings. Yeah, yeah, that's why he would not drink. Somebody ought to be willing to tell the Lord, thank you for not taking the drink. Thank you, Lord, for understanding my dilemma, understanding my feelings, understanding what I go through in this life. Not being alienated from what I feel because all of us have to uh, give vent to the fact that life can deal us some unfair blows. Yeah. Life can throw us some curveballs that we really don't want to live with. Life can come at us in a flooding manner. But when we think of the goodness of Jesus, yeah. when we think of how good the Lord has been, when we think of what he went through for us, we can lift hold the hand and tell him, thank you. For being right here with me. Because you promised in your word. I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. But I'll be with you always. Even until the end of the world. I have a witness. We all have suffered bitter experiences. Let me reiterate that. In our lifetimes. Reach that breaking point. On the cross. He showed us that he understands our painful experiences because he had his own. Mm -hmm. The bitter and gall that Christ tasted on the cross represented all of the bitterness that believers feel. Yeah. When he refused to take it anymore, he also sent a message across the generations that include for us and let us know that he absorbed our pain and made it better. Jesus did not give a reason why he refused the gold and bitter wine. It was notable, hallelujah, uh, it was a notable refusal, primarily because he had already absorbed so much abuse, so much hate, hatred, 
and so much venom. But it doesn't take a big stretch of our imagination to see how he felt our pain. His refusal seemed to say enough. That, 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 praise the Lord, that's the word that we must speak to our bitter experiences enough. Bitter experiences are those that are troubling, disturbing, upsetting, and unrewarding and disastrous. They usually steal our joy, kill our enthusiasm. Bitter experiences can force us into obscurity from the cross. Jesus' refusal should be the conclusion that we reach when we think about how our bitterness has slowed down our march uh, to success and left a bad taste in our mouths. Every believer, every believer, hallelujah, should strive to respond to the bitter situation uh, that take life lemon and praise the Lord. You ought to take life lemon lemon and turn them into lemonade. Do I have a witness here? Anybody ever drunk some lemonade? It's a good drink when you put the right ingredients in. Do I have a witness here? Somebody ought to say amen. But sometimes you have to take the lemon just like it is. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes when you when that old voice gets a little scratchy from singing so much, you have to take that lemon and just cut a, a part of it off and just suck on it. Just like it is. Somebody ought to say amen. Because it helps you with what you're trying to do. And all I'm trying to get us to understand is sometimes like better lemons help us to make better steps. Help us to make better choices. Because when we learn from the lemons of the past, we know how to deal with the lemons of the present. Do I have a witness here? When we learn how to I pray the Lord that, that in the past we had to take those lemons and take them to the Lord and leave them there. When we learn when it hits us in the future, I still got somebody whose name is Jesus that I can run to. For the Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong power and the righteous can run in and find safety. The righteous can run in and find deliverance. The righteous can run in and find help in a needed time. Do I have a witness in my heart? Please just hold name. We become bitter when it gets inside. The gall and the vinegar were bitter. But when Jesus refused to receive it, he refused to accept any more bitterness inside himself. Mm -hmm. The vinegar might have, have wet his lips, but it would have done more damage inside if it had satisfied his parched lips. To be bitter means that you are in a state of heaviness. I wish somebody would walk in here. To be bitter means that you are in a state of sorrowfulness and despair. What happens when we find ourselves in such a state? In the, in the of the Lord, and that uh, we, we, we don't know uh, what is needed to get rid of that thing that's bothering and hurting us. My brothers and sisters, it just keeps on getting worse. Do I have anybody that will give vent to what I'm saying? When you got that bitterness and that hatred and, and that 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 malice and all of that junk just bubbled up inside you and bottled up inside you and it just turns you to be rotten. Somebody ought to say amen. You ever have an apple and bit into it and look good on the outside, but when you bit into it, it was rotten on the inside? Did anybody walk in with me? Praise the Holy Man. That's what that bitterness does for you. It just makes you rotten on the inside. It makes you where nobody can deal with you. It makes you where nobody wants to be around you. It makes you where nobody wants to have anything to do with you. But when you learn that I can't deal with this bitterness, with this, this, this mess by myself, be burdened by myself, when you learn that you can't do it on your own, but that if I just turn it over to Jesus, do I have a witness here? Do I have a witness? What, what? I believe it was a song said, just turn it over to the Lord. And he will work it out. Do I have a witness in the house? Somebody ought to be 
be able to say amen. Somebody ought to be able to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to be able to shout glory. Praise his holy name. I, I come to tell you today that you don't need to allow this to get on the inside and cause you to start a rotting from the inside. Get rid of it. Because it'll just get worse. Get rid of it. Because it'll just tear you down. Get rid of it. Because it'll take away your joy. Get rid of it. Because it'll take away your peace. Get rid of it. Because it'll cause you to become mean. Get rid of it. Because it'll cause you to become angry and malicious. Each time we think of Jesus refusing the bitter cup on the cross, we should also think about what happens if we allow bitter spirits to control our lives. Mm. Bitter spirit taints the way we look at the world. Lord, I wish I had somebody. Especially if someone has offended you or betrayed you, hurt your feelings. Or wounded you. I'm just about to look. Praise this holy name. Or a person, a cause you hold dear. We must refuse the bitter cup. Or it will make us mean and hateful. And will negatively affect everybody around you. Somebody ought to say amen. I have a witness in the house. You ever been in the group? Everybody laughing and having a good time. But then comes that one person that just comes in and just takes it all away. Just turns it all the wrong direction. Come in with all their complaining, all their fault finding, all their nitpicking. Like the can't get that. And then the next thing you know, you almost wish you had never went to lunch with the group. You almost for sure never went to dinner with the group. You, 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 you say, you, you, you'll say to yourself, I had a better time at home by myself. Somebody ought to say amen. But I come to tell you today, you don't have to let that happen if you know who to go to. Do I have a witness here? I want you to know that the Lord is sensitive to bitterness. Do I have a witness here? The gall and the vinegar were bitter. Just as burdens, troubles, and frustrations we face are bitter. I want you to understand that God is sensitive to our needs. Holy Ghost help me to preach every day. Christ's refusal of the bitter drink shows his human side because we also are troubled by bitterness. But each time, my brothers and sisters, we think of Christ's refusal. Each time we think of him refusing that cup. It's a reminder us that the Lord understands the burdens we bear. And how we feel on the inside. There are times when those around us just do not know. Somebody ought to say amen. But God always knows. The skeptics around us doubt our motive. Yes. But God knows. Yes. Because he knows. Lord help me. He helps us carry our load. Yes. And our faith in him somehow makes our burdens just a little lighter. Yes. Do I have a witness here? Yes. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 finds Jesus saying, Come unto me. Uh, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That comparison, that comparison, that comparison, yeah, it is a sign. Yeah, that he knows us. And he knows all about us. A songwriter wrote and said one day, uh, Yes, when your body yes, yes. suffers.
devil's pain. And your devil, you can't regain. And you have to get along meager faith. Jesus delivered it out the man. Jesus the bloody morning sound. Jesus Mary's baby. Jesus the rose of shame. Jesus God's only begotten son. He knows the pain you feel. The song that goes on to say he can save and he can heal. And then he says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Do I have a witness here? The Lord is sensitive to the bitter experiences that trouble us every day. We know it because he re we, re we saw him refuse the bitter cup on the cross. Because he knows bitterness. I come to take it today. He's sensitive to our pain. Why? We are in his hands. We are under the protection of a compassionate God. Understands us out of his compassion and love for us. He opened doors that no man can shut. He shut doors that no man can open. He makes ways I would have seen to be no way. Somebody ought to be able to say. For people who have fallen along the way to be forgiven for them. 
fall. He took our weakness and turned them into strength. He restored our hope that even with the darkness of past experience, we gotta know there's a black side on the other shore. That's why Christ himself, the Son of God, has been refused. He asked the penitent Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, <laughs> 
Hallelujah. 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 Somebody ought to lift their hands and tell the Lord thank you.
of the same manner he took the cup and said, this is the cup in the New Testament, the blood which was shared for you. Drink ye all of it. As often as you do this, you show forth the Lord's death and suffering. Yes. And we shall come to God. Can we say amen? Amen. We're grateful and we thank God for all of you. Amen. Amen. amen.
Can we say amen? Let's rise. Good God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Come on. Come on, uh, Mr. Um, thank you. We have here uh, where our graduates, our graduates have been recognized from our association, from the WIA, the Women's Intermediate Ministry of First South Florida Missionary Baptist, excuse me, First South Florida Missionary Baptist District Association. Can we say amen? amen. Ocean Abner, this is just a little token of love from the WIA of First South Florida. Amen. Y'all kill your butler. Right. I thought she was in the back of the house. back here. You home for the holiday? Yes, sir. <laughs> Bless your heart. Amen. Yeah, She's still the, the giggling type. Amen. Yeah, hold on to that, honey. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Well, Shante Matthews. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, uh, says, Mister, you make sure Ashanti get this, please, in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, ma'am. All right. And we will be uh, doing our part from St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church. Okay, I'm coming to, uh, from St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church, uh, a lot of our ecclesiastical meetings have been canceled due to the pandemic and due to trying to make sure that we don't have, uh, find ourselves gathering with large groups and all of that, the moderator and the vice moderators and all of the Congress presidents are trying to make sure that we remain in a safe position to keep everybody as safe as possible. That's why we haven't been having our uh, fifth Sunday congressional meetings or any of that in the name of the Lord. Amen. Um, we've been trying to abide by what has been said. I'm going, I'm going to let you go, but I just want to say to you that we appreciate everything and I want to make the church aware that our obligation towards uh, First South Florida, with this ministry in particular, uh, the junior women and the WIA senior women, we will do our part that we are supposed to do in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Sister Bob? Uh, did you just sing happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got me. If I hadn't done all this announcing that I had done, I'd say we'd catch it next Sunday. But I've done all this announcing, and we're going to go on and sing happy birthday. Uh, Y'all come on. Happy birthday to